Most of us have heard the claim in the Filipino martial arts about the footwork being based upon triangles. And there's sometimes you will see a triangle in the fighting. Here, move with me a little bit where I will create an angle like this. The same foot stayed forward. However, you will not see triangles where the other foot comes forward because now I feel the disadvantage. He's going to be whacking me on my front side and this stick feels too far away and out of the game. And so what tends to happen is we both tend to sit in the right lead if we're righties. We wave our sticks at each other. I sort of lean in, he leans away, and now he tries to counter me and we go back and forth in this elastico kind of a thing. Or maybe I shuffle forward a bit and then he shuffles forward a bit and as I shuffle back. We don't really see any triangles. I got to thinking about this. I said, well, if there's a whole bunch of triangles that I don't use because it puts my stick in the rear, I wonder what would happen if I learned to fight double stick for real, not just the drills in class. If I can put either stick in front as a fighter, now I have more triangles. I have more angles to play. And if I develop my coordination with the pattern training, perhaps I can offset the fact that I'm not the fastest guy out there. And so in the double stick training, the footwork is very important. So let's quickly establish now where the footwork matrix is here. When our training partner is frozen in this double caveman position, for training purposes in the beginning, it represents a double caveman chamber. He's chambered to throw a caveman from here and to throw a caveman from here. So we're here like this, there can be lots of movement here, but in the moment that I can isolate that left forehand strike, I'm moving around, I'm selling all kinds of whatever foolishness, but in this moment, there is the timing that we're looking for. And I think he's throwing that big caveman strike. And my idea, my intention is when he, I step in and provoke that right, oh, whoops, I wasn't expecting that. He threw the other one. So on this technique, we want to make sure that we go to the outside. He's showing, oh, I've been training a long time. Look at this cool combination I can do. And in this moment, I get both hands. I gallantly let him pick up his sticks. He throws all of his years of training out the window, and he goes to this. And then there are other people who just say, ah, screw all that stuff. I just feel cool and natural with this. Done by someone who has the fighter's understanding and fighter's spirit, there's nothing to be laugh at there, as simple as that may seem to be. And there's some other levels that that structure can be taken to as well. But right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at Redondo 3 against that structure. When this one was in the forehand chamber, if I went into this side, I had a neurological uh, reflex problem because I don't know which side it's coming from. But when they're both on this side, that problem goes away. And so it looks something like this. Now is my moment to blitz and drive.
This material has an almost mathematical quality to it. There's a formula here. And if you grasp the essence of it, it will be very powerful and you will find it applying in many ways. <coughs>